Okay, everyone. Now it's the moment that you've all been waiting for, or at least, well, not all of you. Some of you have been waiting for, I think. Uh, it's time to go ahead and listen to the CD-ROM version of Freddy Farkas and see how some of the voices sound, given the uh, original voice acting that uh, was originally meant to come on the uh, later CD-ROM version of the game, of course, released after the floppy version, but still, what actors did they use, uh, and so forth. Uh, so... Before I run the game, I'll just go uh, through a quick explanation of what I did to prepare for this video. It wasn't really a lot of preparation, but um, most of Sierra's games came with uh, an installer, which allowed you to choose what kind of hardware setup you had. Uh, so, for example, in Freddy Farkas, if we run the installer program here real quick, we'll see... Um, what I did was I set the music to use the IBM PC or compatible internal speaker. That's because I wanted to isolate the music from the sound. Uh, I intend to play this video without music because I want us to be able to hear the voices better. We've already heard the music from the game when I played through the game, so uh, so I'm going to... What I'm going to do is... I, th I think I already did, actually, but I'll double-check. I'll turn off the uh, internal speaker, and that way we'll just get the what the game calls audio, which means the sound effects minus the music. Uh, so what I'll... I'll just cancel out of this because I already saved those settings. And in DOSBox, if you use the mixer command... Uh, you can use this to adjust the different volume levels. So what you can see I've done is I've set the SPKR, the internal speaker, down to zero, which mutes the internal speaker. That'll mute the music because I set the game to play the music through the internal speaker. Um, I've also... well, usually during these videos, in every video that I've made of this game, I usually turn the master volume way down, usually to around 20%. Um, that's because otherwise the game's audio would be too loud in relation to my voice. But because I want us to be able to hear the voices from the game a bit better in this video, I've cranked it down to only 50%. Even 50% volume is still pretty loud when you record directly from DOSBox. So, um... <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, so yeah, I think that'll be fine. We'll be able to hear the voice as well. And since the music will be playing through the speaker, but the speaker has been turned down to zero, we won't have the music interfering with the voices. So, let's go ahead and begin. And we're not going to hear the usual boom. Because that's music, and I've turned off the music. On the other hand, we did hear that, because that is a sound effect. So, let's go ahead and start off with the opening prologue. And folks, you're in for a treat this time, because this time the game will sing the prologue itself. He was born in old St. Louis, by the age of four, dad knew he was the best little crack shot the West had ever seen. By the time he reached pubescence, he could outshoot all the adolescents west of Durango and north of Abilene. Farkas, Freddy Farkas, famous gunslinging deputy Freddy Farkas. Freddy Farkas, frontier hero to be. Then one day, young Freddy Farkas stared at eyes as black and dark as night. The eyes of an outlaw well known throughout the West. Oh, the tough kid's name was Kenny, and he, and he outdrew Freddy Farkas when he shot Freddy's ear off to prove who was the best. Now our hero, Freddy Farkas, with wounded pride and earless carcass, bowed to the heavens to give up gunnery. He'd be better off, he reckoned, with a lifelong dream that always beckoned pestles, not pistols, and pharmacology. Farkas, Freddy Farkas, Highest score on his SAT, Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas, five-year college degree. After 
Alfred matriculated, got his Ph.D. and graduated, moved out to Coors Gold and bought a pharmacy. Now he's a real prescription writer, and they don't know he's an ex-gunfighter. Locked up his memories, repressed them totally. But his peaceful new survival soon was shot to hell upon arrival of Coors Gold School Marm. The sweet Penelope. She has captured Fred's affection, but he's scared he'll get a huge rejection. Can't bear to tell her just what he used to be. Farkas, Freddy Farkas, frontier pharmacist, bourgeoisie, Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Peerless, earless, and free. There you go. Now you folks understand why I didn't sing the intro, because I don't think I could have done better than that. Also, they changed some of the sound effects for this version of the game. Like, you can hear the... Freddy Farkas? You was asking about Freddy Farkas? Yes, I was. The man what saved Coarse Gold, only nobody knowed it was him? <laughs> Why, just hop up here on old Whitlin Willie's lap, and I'll tell you all about it. Ow, a carn sarnet, a bit more to the right. That's got it. Sit right there. Oh, no, thank you. Now, if I remembers this right, it's been a quite a few years. My brain's getting a mad rusty. Oh, that's right. It all started when Freddy went to open up the pharmacy one day, way back in the spring of 18 and 88, as I recall. They changed the sound effect of that hammer. Because if you remember, in the, uh, in the first game, it was... Each tap sort of sounded out twice for some reason. It was like, da -da 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 -da. but now they made it more like a proper hammer. It's just tap, tap, tap instead of to tap, to tap, to tap. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically why I didn't sing the intro. I don't think I could have done better than that. Um, somebody mentioned, I think, on the previous video or a couple of videos ago, maybe that um, that uh, possibly Al Lowe was actually singing that intro. Um, I'm not sure if that was Al Lowe doing the singing, but. Uh, Al Lowe did have a musical background before he started designing games for Sierra. He was a music teacher, so he did have... Uh, I remember seeing him on television once, actually. He was joking, I have the perfect background for designing computer games, because, of course, being a school music teacher is a logical segue into designing games. Anyway, so here we are in the game. Let's go ahead and talk to this woman. Howdy, ma'am. She smiles at you. If your heart didn't already belong to Penelope, you might be tempted to ask her to join you for a glass of sarsaparilla. Let's talk to uh, Billy, who's boarding up the hotel. Billy, the town handyman and jack-of-all-trades, is boarding up yet another coarse gold business. The Dirty Sheet Hotel, the finest hostelry in all of eastern Madera County. Okay, so maybe it was only the best after that other hotel was shut down, but in its day, the dirty sheet was really something. Say, Billy, when did the old dirty sheet fold? <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Farkas. Why, just yesterday. It was a surprise to me, too. Nobody told me nothing about it until they gave me these boards. I'll go ahead and speed up Freddy's walking a little bit. Uh... Oh, for some reason the volume is turned way down. Not sure where that is. Uh, anyway, so uh, just as a note, Freddy Farkas in this game is voiced by... Uh, oh dear, what's the voice actor's name? I believe it's Cam Clark from memory or something close to that, who uh, I didn't realize before uh, was famous for actually quite a lot of voice acting. That same actor was the uh, voice of one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the original cartoon animated series. I think it was Leonardo out of the four Ninja Turtles, and he has quite a lot of other credits to his name as well. If you look him up on Wikipedia or probably IMDB or some other sites like that, you'll find he's he's got a long history of voice acting, so so Freddy's got some pretty good talent behind him. Some of the other voice actors in this game are obviously not quite as famous, and they did repeat some of them. Some of the characters in this game are voiced by more than one actor. 
So anyway, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and go inside the saloon and see whom we can find here. Let's go ahead and talk to Sam Andreas, the bartender. Well, if it ain't Sam Andreas, the bartender's bartender. If it's not, I'm having a severe identity crisis. How the heck are you? Tolerably well. Yourself? Can't complain. Pharmacy business seems to be pretty good lately. Ah, well, the pharmacy business has always been a little too interesting for me to hear about, so, eh, don't be a stranger. I have to admit, I never thought of Sam as being British accented. It's kind of, a lot of the voices in this version of the game is sort of confuse my notions of what I thought these characters were supposed to be like and supposed to sound like, because I, I never thought of Sam as sounding like a refined British gentleman. I don't think they had too many refined British gentlemen in the Old West. I mean, maybe they had some, but uh, were they really bartenders? I guess some of them could have been, but anyway. Let's talk to Doc over here, still drinking as usual. Doc! Hey, Doc! Huh? What's that? Are you drunk again? Me? Drunk? Never. I'm as sober as the day I was plowed off my ass. I mean, the day I was born. All right. I don't know. I guess. I guess that's a pretty passable rendition of Doc. I mean, he's he's a pretty one-sided character. It's not really mu not much you can do with a character like that. You can't take credit for something you haven't done. Yeah, somebody pointed out in a previous video that uh, those credits that pop up during the beginning of the game, you can actually click on them to interact with them and get funny messages out of them as well. That pig is one smooth conversationalist. If only you spoke pig Latin. Ah, yes. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and talk to Mom and Hop Sing. Morning, Helen. Freddy Farkas, since when are we on a first name basis? Only my closest friends may call me Helen. You and I are acquaintances, nothing more. Therefore, you should address me as Mom. Land's sake, I'm sorry, Hel- uh, Mom? That's better. Now, what'd you want? Well, uh, when I remember, I'll let you know. Honestly, some people. Some people indeed. And let's talk to Hop Sing while we're here. Howdy, Hop. How's the restaurant business? Pretty slow. Not much business. Seem like town closing up and blowing away. You've noticed that too, have you? Oh yes. First old abandoned mine, then assay office, then post office, then tall and thin shop, then theater, yesterday hotel. What next? Well, I intend to get to the bottom of this. Maybe hurry before Mom's next to go. Hop Singh not want to lose his job. And if we talk to Hop Singh again? May I ask you a question, Hop Singh? Oh, uh, what's that? Well, it's an inquiry, an interrogative sentence calling for an answer. Yeah, but that's not important right now. I'd like to know if you've got something against pronouns, contractions, and conjunctions. You use so few of them. I can any time I like. It's simply that Helen Back paid me handsomely to come and act like an authentic Chinese chef. Granted, nobody actually speaks like this, but she seems to think people speak like this. So, hey, she cuts the checks, I just play along. That answer question? Perfectly. Thanks. A secret is revealed. All right, what else do we have? Let's come over here and talk to the blacksmith. We don't see for much in the game because he disappears after the first act, but... You know, Smithy, I've been wondering about that horse of yours. What happened? Corn Sarn neighborhood kids, you just can't leave anything outside at night anymore without them stripping it right down to the axles. How's business, Smithy? Flatter than cow plop, Farkas. And you? Actually, I'm doing okay. Not great, but I'm making it, in spite of this mild economic downturn we've been experiencing. Bah, if it I could find me a buyer, I'd unload this dump in a sec. 
All right. Well, uh, let's see. I think that's it for the west side. Oh, wait, no, the bank, of course. We have the bank here. Let's go ahead and talk to P.H. Balance. Have I told you about our new Columbus Day account? It's a full benefit, non-interest bearing account. Did you hear about our Easter Club account? We may even make it an interest bearing account if we can bear to part with the interest. Yeah, I uh Gosh, there's something I want to say about that, but I, I realize it's going to sound terrible and it might offend some people. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it because I hope that people realize I'm not trying to say it in a, in a mean way. But when I first played this game, I always imagined PH Balance as being sort of dignified. You know, you know, I, I voiced him with a rather deep and dignified sort of tone. But because I thought that he sort of carried himself very highly and was very snotty and, and snobbish and thought very highly of himself. But uh, after hearing his voice here, I get the impression that they tried to make him very Jewish, sort of playing on the stereotype of, you know, Jews having a lot of money and being rich bankers and things like that. Um, I could be wrong, but that's just how I sort of perceive him now, talking to him now. Yes, sir! Our latest Halloween passbook account is very innovative. We give you 0% interest and only charge you a nominal fee. Yeah. I don't know, that's kind of the impression I get from him now. I'm not sure if that's just my own, my own sort of, uh, interpretation of it. But anyway, uh, so in the Mercantile Store, we have, of course, Whitland Willie, whom we've already heard. And there is Chester in there. I'm not going to talk to Chester because we'll see him again towards the end of the game. At the beginning of Act 4, we'll talk to him. Well, I guess I can just step inside quickly and... The door swings open. From the back, you hear Chester's voice. Help yourself. I'll be right out. Yeah, and that's the that's all we hear of Chester until the beginning of Act 4. That's it. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Salvatore and see what kind of accent they gave this Irish-Italian barber. This is kind of a no-win situation because um, any accent they give him will probably be the wrong one. Although I guess that, that might have been the point, actually. Maybe that was the reason why they made him Irish-Italian. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and talk to Salvatore. How's business, Sal? Seems like you always have a customer these days. Not so good, Freddy. My earnings, she's up, but my profits, she's down. Oh, that's too bad, Sal. Do you have any ideas about how to increase business? Well, I do have one idea. I've been thinking about providing dirty reading material for my customers to read whilst they wait. But your customers are illiterate. Aye, and they can't read so good neither. I guess what they've done, obviously, is rather than giving him a consistently Irish Italian accent, they just have him switching back and forth between the two. He starts off with one and then switches to the other and kind of freely rotates between them. Uh, which somebody commented was supposed to be the point. I guess the idea the point of that of having Salvatore be Irish Italian was to make fun of voice actors who can't stick consistently with one accent and sort of switch between them. Anyway, in here in the outhouse we have of course Zircon Jim Laffer. Oh, those darned kids! Don't they have anything better to do than hide joy buzzers under the outhouse seat? Hmm. That was not an expected outcome. I thought at the beginning of the game Zircon Jim Laffer is uh, taking a uh, taking a bit of a rest stop in there, but uh, maybe they changed it in this game. I don't know. Anyway, okay, uh, we'll see him later in the at the beginning of Act Four, anyhow. So I guess it's all right. And here we have some children playing. Let's go ahead and talk to Penelope. Let's see what Penelope sounds like in this version of the game. Shh! That person's already working on another game. That's what happens when you try to talk to the credits. Come on, Penelope. Penelope! Seriously? Is Penelope... Oh, there we go. Thank you. Penelope! Freddy, how nice to see you. Did you leave work just to come see me? Uh, 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 yeah. 
Just being able to look at you makes my day seem to fly by. Penelope titters and tilts her head coyly. <laughs> oh, you do know how to flatter a girl, don't you? Now you get back to work so you'll have enough money to take me to the Sadie Hawkins Day dance next week. As you wish, m'lady. <laughs> oh. Alright, so Penelope, I guess, has a pretty... pretty much this, the type of voice that you'd expect from her. Can we talk to, uh, to this, uh, Native American gentleman here? Morning, Dominic. Morning, Freddy. What's new? Uh, let's see. I finished reading A Century of Dishonor last night. Quite impressive. That Helen Hunt Jackson really knows how to evoke an image of the white man's treachery. Do you know how many treaties your people have signed and then broken in the past 20 years alone? Uh, excuse me, I, I heard someone calling me or something. Yeah. And I think the last major character whom we have to talk to is the sheriff. Sheriff? Parkburn? What do you want? Why'd you close down the Dirty Sheet Hotel? Watch it to you. Well, I... I'm a little worried about the tourist trade, and... It's not your place to worry about the tourist trade, boy. You leave that to me. Now, as for the hotel, if it's any of your business, it was attracting the wrong sort of business. Transients, hobos, people of low moral fiber. Can't be having none of that going on in Corsco, can you? But at the rate these places are closing down, in a matter of days, there won't be any town left. Listen to me, boy. That ain't none of my never mind. I'm just looking to make this place as safe as can be. So if I gotta close down a place or two, well, y'all will just have to live with that. Patooey! <coughs> the spittoon makes a resounding ping. Yes, it does. All right, I think that's it for the town's major characters. Um, there are, of course, uh, more incidental characters we sometimes see walking on the street, and uh, like this guy. No time. Got to deliver the mail. Uh, but there was one in particular who attracted the interest of uh, Coventer. Uh, that was this guy in the huge top hat. Now, I'm pretty sure that I did talk to this guy in the floppy version of the game, but I thought he was interesting enough that we might want to try talking to him here and see what comes of him in the CD-ROM version of the game. So let's go ahead and talk to this gentleman here. You can't think of anything to say I to that. I clicked on the wrong thing. You can't think... God. You can't think... Come on, seriously? You talking to me? Well, I... What am I, some sort of clown to you? No. What? Do I walk funny or something? No, and please don't hurt me. Good. Nice talking to you. See you around. Now I think about it, I think that is probably a reference to that scene from Goodfellas, where, um, <clears throat> you know, that famous scene where Joe Pesky's character is saying, What am I, some sort of clown to you? Well, you think I'm funny? Because uh, he gets offended when somebody says he's a funny guy. Anyway, um, I guess that's it for the first part of the game. And by the way, the uh, voice actor who voices P.H. Balance, the banker, is the same... I believe he's the same voice actor as the guy who voices Whitlin Willie, so... Oh. <laughs> this... Whoa. Oh, everything's going crazy now. This uh, gentleman in the top hat appears to be stuck on me because one sprite can't walk through another using this adventure game engine and so he's just sort of been suspended in mid-stride that's pretty awesome i didn't intend for that to happen but that just sort of happened serendipitously all right uh i think that's it for the first part of the game let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit i did want to for whatever reason i did want to capture uh, this part of the game because there are these people who make some protests when you try to cut in line at the outhouse so let's go ahead and drink this contaminated water to make freddie run into the outhouse while these people are waiting you take a swim Hey, buddy, no cutting. It's people like you that give people like you a bad name. Well, howdy, Mr. Farkas. Uh, I was just leaving, I swear. G g give me one more minute. Perfectly okay, Billy. No need to get up. Just 
scoot over a little. Uh, well, I... <laughs> Jeez, Mr. Farkas, invade my personal space, why don't you? A yeah, few moments later, you emerge... Yeah, okay. I, I'm skipping through some of these messages now because we already know what the narrator sounds like and we already know what Freddy sounds like, so there's no need to to play through all those messages again. You uh, There's also, those people also make some vocalizations when we climb on... Your when we climb onto the roof of the outhouse. So let's go ahead and... You snare... Who's this schmuck with the rope? Be careful, you don't put an eye out. Score! As you reach the... Thank God, it's Freddy! We're number one! We're number one! What are you gonna do now, Freddy? I'm going to Sierra Land! Boing. Yeah, okay, boing, whatever. Uh, I guess some of those vocalizations were a little bit half-hearted, but then they were relatively minor roles, I suppose. Uh, all right, let's see, moving on. Uh, we do want to talk to Srini. So this is the point where we first meet Srini. Let's go ahead and talk to him and see what he has to say. Hello, stranger. I haven't seen you around these parts before. I know it's none of my business. But why are you sitting on top of an active anthill in the heat of this semi-desert sun? Oh, my formal fellow. I am but a weary traveler from a land far, far away, journeying here peacefully merely to experience the curative powers of your local mineral waters. The other members of my stagecoach party, claiming a frustration with my excessive verbosity and sesquipedalian inclinations, forcefully placed me in my current sitting position on this lovely feature of your landscape, knowing full well that because of religious reasons, I would be unable to climb down by myself. How cruel those Yosemite-bound tourists are. My name is Frederick Farkas. I own the local pharmacy here in Coarse Gold. How do you do, Mr. Farkas? My name is Srini Lalkaka Bagnish. Pardon me if I don't get up. Hmm. I've been considering taking on a loyal Indian sidekick. I'm seeking a new assistant down at the pharmacy. Would you be considering a relocation to this area? You know, Coarse Gold offers extremely reasonable housing costs and an abundance of sunny weather, and is close to schools and churches. Well, no. Not really. But yes, perhaps I would be willing, but as you can readily see, I'm quite busy at this current moment. Have you considered climbing down and walking away? I cannot possibly do that. Life is sacred. If I were to move, I should indubitably injure some of these small six-legged life forms. I'm sure someone will come along soon to the aid of me. I'll see what I can do, Srini. Yes, sesquipedalian indeed. So that's Srini, who, by the way, I believe is the same voice actor as Hop Singh. So that, uh, that guy had double duty as playing uh, Asian migrants to the Americas. Uh, okay, I think... I think we're starting to find out why I don't like the uh, CD-ROM version of the game. Nothing appears to happen when we walk on these ants. So we don't have a King's Quest V style electric bugaloo scene. Uh, Alright, let's go ahead and move on to... Let's see, so we've got... Uh, yeah, I guess the next logical scene to capture is here at the brothel. Let's go ahead and meet the ladies here in the brothel. And uh, talk to each of them. Howdy, chastity. Howdy to you, you big old sloppy hunk of manly macho woman loving man. Laying it on a little thick tonight, aren't we? Yeah, business is slow, but I gotta keep in practice. I guess she's supposed to be a Latina or something like that. Evening, purity. Evening, Freddy, darling. Has Madam still got you under lock and key, or you gonna let us get a hold of you one of these days, big boy? I'm afraid I'm all hers, for the time being. Well, if you ever change your mind, honey, you know where to find us. Mm -mm. And when, and how often, and for how much. Howdy, Miss Virtue. You sure are a vision of loveliness. 
Thank you ever so much, Freddy. And you, sir, are a study and buff. What does that mean? Just that you're the manliest prescription-filling man I did ever see. Oh, thank you. All right, and let's talk to the sheep. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Translation. How much do you charge anyway? <coughs> Translation. I'm sheep at twice the price. Ba, 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 ba. Translation. Sounds like a deal. <coughs> Translation. Yes. I cost next to mutton. Okay, let's try to forget that that ever happened and <clears throat> never experience that again. All right, I'm just going to wait around until Madame shows up and let's. I'll actually go through that whole scene. Why not? Let's because that's one of the most pivotal scenes in the game. This scene that marks the transition from Act Two to Act Three. Let's go ahead and just. Uh, we might as well sit through that, I suppose. Even though with this voice acting, it'll drag on for a while, but we might as well, if Madame ever shows up. How long is it going to take for her to... I wonder, does she actually wait until... Because the French postcards are necessary to finish the game, and I was thinking, you know, since this game tries to avoid getting you stuck into a dead end where you can't win the game... Uh, oh, no, she does come out after all. I was wondering, maybe the game waits until you take the postcards so you don't get stuck... Hey, Mona Moore, it's about time you showed up. Ready to take my pharmacy bill out in trade? Sure. Then get over here before I have to come get you, little pumpkin. By the way, Madame is voiced by the same voice actor as Helen Back, a.k.a. Mom. Freddy, I, I think you should leave. Why, Sadie? Just because I'm using you for cheap, tawdry pleasure when my heart belongs to Penelope Prim, the gorgeous, young, obviously more virtuous, new town schoolmarm? What? Who? Oh, <laughs> nothing. Never mind. What were you saying? Oh, I was just saying I think you should leave. Leave town, that is. There's... Oh, it's so tragic. Oh, Friday, there's just no easy way to say this. The girls say the sheriff and the banker talk in their sleep. They hate you, Freddy. They want you dead. They're out to get you. Something about you foiling the plan and how they had to get you out of the way. You have to run, Freddy. You have to get out of town by sundown. Now, don't you worry, Sadie. I've been doing a pretty good job up till now. Using just my wits and my pharmacological knowledge, haven't I? I'm not gonna just turn tail and run and leave you and Penelope and Coarse Gold behind me to fend for yourselves. You're not listening to me, Freddy Farkas. There's man a coming. Man with guns. Big guns. Guns with long barrels. Long, hard barrels. Long, hard, steely barrels. And low slung holsters. And. and. Uh, oh, sorry. Sadie, snap out of it. Oh, sorry. I was just visualizing. Anyway, you'll never be able to outthink men with guns. If you're set on staying in town, you'll have to, you know, go back to your old ways. That's out of the question. I left gunslinging behind me years ago. I'm not like that anymore. And I don't want to discuss it. Stop it. You gotta choose, and that's all there is to it, hon. Either leave town and save your hide, or pull yourself together and face reality. Quit talking about potions and liniments. They're not gonna stop no bullets. It's time to get off of your cute little butt and give these men a taste of frontier justice. Now, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. Hold me, Sadie. Press me to your ample bosom, and let me decide tomorrow. You got it, hon. Alright, that was the end of that. Uh, 
So, <clears throat> now we get into Act 3, and can I skip, yes, I can skip through this, all right. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the scene just after our shooting practice, because there are a couple of things here that I want to capture. One thing in particular that I'd like to capture is what happens if you visit the toilet. I forgot this in the original playthrough of the game. If you visit the toilet right after the shooting practice... Excuse me very much. I believe this stall is taken. Oops. Sorry, Judge. Everything coming out okay? Of course. Same old story. Thank you for asking. Sorry, I just realized I had folded up my microphone during that long scene, and then I, I forgot to fold it back down, so I'm not sure if my voice was... I, you probably heard what I was saying. I just sounded a little bit distant. I was just saying, after the shooting practice, this, uh, this scene plays out if you try to visit the outhouse, and I thought that was pretty cool, because that's a character whom we don't see otherwise. I don't think we see him anywhere at any time in the game except right here, so... And I guess he's a judge, because Freddy Fargus called him judge, so I guess he's the local courthouse judge, even though there's no, cor cor there's no courthouse in Coarse Gold, at least that we've seen, so... Um, <clears throat> all right, and let's also talk to Hop Singh, because Hop Singh is leaving at this point of the game, so let's go ahead and head out west and catch Hop Singh just as he's leaving town. There he is. Hey, Hop! Oh, Freddy. Take care, old man. I'm out of here. But why? Well, Mom's closed, and I hear the streets of San Francisco are paved with snails. So, I'm going to take my unique blend of culinary expertise, specializing in traditional American frontier fare, executed with a Near Eastern blend of herbs and spices, and quaint rustic Chinese movie dialect, and open a restaurant with my old partner, Dap Dance. Oh no, sing and dance together again. Well, take care, Hop. Good luck to you. Same to you, Freddy. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. I think now it's time to go ahead and go to Act 4. And here in Act 4, like I said, this is the one time when we can really talk to Chester. So let's talk to Chester here. Hope and Chester won't recognize you with your new disguise. You approach him with a friendly smile. Say, partner, that's a woeful little sign you're carrying there. We'll polish ears for stagecoach fare. What's the problem? Why so down on your luck? Well, I'll tell you. Even though I don't usually talk to silver-disguised strangers, there's a man inside who's the best damn poker cheat I've ever seen. I never even knew he was stealing my store till it was all over. You see, I bet everything I owned, including my store, on a queen high straight flush. And that bastard had a king high. Don't feel bad, fella. I would have probably done the same. By the way, did you get this gambler's name? Name? Sure did. Wheaton Hall's his name. Everybody calls him Aces. And I can see why. Thanks for your time. And I hope things work out for you. I think I might just pay Mr. Aces a little call. Good luck to you, stranger, especially if you're going to get in that game. Thanks. I'm wearing my lucky neckerchief, so I'm not too worried. Yeah, but are those blood stains there? Hmm. That appears to have been an ad-libbed line, because I'm pretty sure in the floppy version of the game, Chester's response was, Yeah, right. Uh, Chester, by the way, I believe is voiced by the same actor as the sheriff. <clears throat> Anyway, let's go ahead and see Aces. Uh, yeah, there he is. Oh, but first, let's talk to uh, this ancestor of Leader Zoot Larry. Howdy, stranger. New in town? Hi, I sure am. And I'm looking for a hot time. I've been noticing some of your fine, coarse gold fillies. I wouldn't mind an introduction. Perhaps you could put in a good word for me with one of them. Of course, I know a lot of you boys gotta pay for your fun, but uh, I figure a guy with my looks and breath, hey, they should be paying me, you know? <laughs> right? Right. Uh, by the way, my name's Laffer. Zircon Jim Laffer. <laughs> Don't believe I caught yours. 
Oops, I think I smell something burning or something. Catch you later. Phew, what rock did he crawl out from under? Yes. All right, let's talk to uh, Aces. How's the game going, Slick? Who wants to know? Just interested. Well, it's going very nicely, Justin. I've won the deeds to the saloon, the cafe, the school, and several other plots of land. My employer will be pleased. <laughs> I should have the rest of the town sewn up in just a few minutes. Who's your employer? Sorry, that information is covered under the terms of boss hustler privilege. Okay. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that I caught everything, so let's go ahead and um and just come out here to where we uh wait, is this the uh at this point we've already we've already I wanted to catch the voice of Kenny the Kenny the kid, obviously. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and go through the fencing again. And uh, I'm gonna have to do this, but that's that's okay. We can do this. We can do this. That's right. I think if you just very aggressively click on Penelope's upper torso, it seems to work out pretty well, actually. Oh, not that time. But most of the time, it seems to work pretty well. Come on. There we go. Curses! You foiled me! It's not a foil, it's a saber. A foil is straight and has two sharp edges. Unless it's the smaller French foil, which is dull and is used chiefly for thrusting. A saber, like this one, is curved and has one sharp edge. As a teacher and a member of the fencing team, <laughs> you of all people should have known that! Oh no. Foiled, defeated, and corrected. Now I really feel bad. And thank God for my high school intramural sports program. Otherwise, I'd be Fettuccine Alfredi by now. Score! Hello? Yes. Hey, it's you! I recognize you now from the old neighborhood. Freddy something. Good to see you again, Kenny. I hope I didn't hurt your hand out there in the street. By the way, I think Kenny the Kid is voiced by the same actor as Salvatore O'Hanahan the Barber, just so you know. Whoa, that was you out there? I didn't recognize you. Have you done something with your hair? Okay, now it's time to kill Kenny. No, not my hair, Kenny. But this! Yeah. Hurl in your sharpened ear like a ch score. All right, there we go, and that score marks our ascent to 1,001 points. So this time, playing through the game, I took the letter from Philip de Graves a second time, and I took the church key a second time, which leaves us with 1,001 points out of 999 possible points. Two extra points. All right, and now it's time to watch the closing ballad as sung once again by whoever sings the ballads in in this game. Yes, sir, by God. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. Now the whole town still remembers how the old school house was blown to embers, though. Miss Prim's body was never, ever found. Since the sheriff and the banker made the folks of course go red with anger, they tarred and feathered and ran them out of town. And Serene, he became an ordinary wreck, salty be shaman down on the Pecos where engine hearts still burn. While the townsfolk safe from danger Talk about that silver earlobe stranger Where did he come from And when will he return Barkus Freddy Barkus Black gold fields were his legacy Freddy Barkus Freddy Barkus Peerless 
fearless and free. Wasn't that a wonderful closing? Oh, it's not the end yet. We still have this. But I think it's just... Normally there would be music at this stage, but obviously there's not because I turned it off, so... Uh, I think there's nothing to do here except just watch this horse do a wheelie for an uncharacteristically long period of time while Freddy waves his hat around and... Oh, you can see his ears glinting. I didn't notice that before. You can actually see little glints of silver coming off his two silver ears that he made for himself. Well, not now, but there were before. I guess it just maybe just happens once, but I, I'm pretty sure I saw glints coming off his two ears there. I don't know, are we supposed to wait for this, or am I supposed to... Cl oh, there we go, the end, okay. And here are the... Hmm, let's see, can we... I guess we can sit... Through, I guess we can sit through the, uh, the outtakes at the end of the credits as well, since... Uh, since that was also kind of interesting. And I know I didn't catch all the deaths in the game. I think that's okay. I, I didn't... I don't necessarily mean to capture every single way to die in this game. That's what Mr. Whitman is for. There's a YouTube user named Mr. Whitman who basically makes videos that show every possible way to die in a lot of different Sierra games. Um, so... Unless a, unless a death is particularly especially interesting, I don't want to necessarily go out of our way to capture every possible death that you can see in the games. Freddy! You?! Why, Penelope? Why? Why on earth have you done all this? I suppose I can tell you. You know too much already, so I can never let you live. I had just finished my education back in western Pennsylvania at the local Meadville... Oh, wait a second, Josh, can I ask you a question? Cut! <sighs> Shelly, how many times do we have to do this damn scene? It's just that... I don't understand my motivation for this speech. Oh, jeez. I mean... Why would Penelope reveal all this to Freddy? Why doesn't she just kill him and get on with it for crying out loud? Just do it, all right? I want to get home tonight. Look, I've got people coming in from the coast. This is about acting, Gil. You wouldn't know anything about that. Shell, it's just a plot device so that the audience understands what's going on. Otherwise, we leave uh, a lot of unanswered questions. Oh, can't we just... Put it in the manual instead, Joshy, sweetie booby, honey. It's just so, so... dull. No, they might read it before they finish the game. Ready to take it again? All right. Fine. I suppose. And... action! I assume she was supposed to be talking to Josh Mandel since she called him Josh, and Josh was the producer for this game. It didn't sound like King Graham, though, because, again, Josh Mandel voiced King Graham in the King's Quest games, so either his real voice sounds quite different, although I don't think it does. I remember I watched an, an interview with Josh Mandel, and I don't think he sounded like that, so I don't think that was actually him, but maybe I'm wrong. Ow! Oh, God. You hit me again! No, 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 no! You really hit me! Cut! Yes, I'm cut, and I'm bleeding, too! I hope it's serious, you little wimp. Excuse me, can I say something here? I am gonna sue. This is what happened to Margaret Hamilton, you know. Where are you bleeding? My finger. You'll never pick his ear with that finger again. <laughs> oh, you just shut up, Miss Thing. This is all your fault, you know. Can you suffer through one more take, Gil? Oh, sure, Joshua, and I'll just bleed to death. But you'll have your game. That's what you want, isn't it? That's what you really want. That's all this is about. You, you, you. <sighs> all right. 
Come on, let's do it. What are we waiting for? Come on, people, let's go. <sighs> All right, come on, let's do it. What are we waiting for? Come on, come on, come on, people, let's go. We're losing the light. Gil, use the pain. Direct it at Shelley. All right. Oh, my formal fellow, I am but a weary traveler from a land far, far away. Cut! What was wrong with that? Uh, the accent slipped, babe. Good. <sighs> I didn't hear any Italian creeping in. I thought it was pretty good. You don't like my accent? You call my agent. I can't work under these conditions. I'm going to my trailer. Antonio, don't walk on the ants! Uh. Ants? Ha! <clears throat> That's what I think of your lousy ants. Mike! Get Antonio's agent on the phone. Steve, get the rest of the programmers down here. Gil, take five. I'm still here. I'm just waiting for this to finish. It's running a little bit. Double. Stunt double. Hey, I said stunt double. I'm not going to do this jump myself. I could break my neck. I'm going to my trailer. Gil, just do it. Oh, yeah, right. Like that's in my contract. My stunt double is supposed to handle this. She can't. She quit yesterday. Oh, really? Why? People, people, work with me here, huh? I'm sensing reluctance. Now, please, just do the jump before we lose the assay set, all right? Oh, honey, doesn't this scene take place at night? Well, we're shooting day for night. It's cheaper. The artists will fix it in post-production. Oh, I see. Off the set, Millie! Ooh, but I wanted to watch Gil break his neck. Get out! He's nervous enough about doing this scene without you watching him. Ready, Gail? This is ridiculous. I swear, I will sue if something goes wrong. This is what happened to Margaret Hamilton, you know. Just do it. And... Action! <laughs> Ow! Workers' comp! Workers' comp! Cut! Why did he do that jump when there wasn't even any baking soda? There's not even any baking soda on the teeter-totter. How's he supposed to put out the fire now? All right, and that's... I'll just go ahead and skip through that, and that's it. Okay, and if we quit, the game gives us congratulations. It says, you done real good, kid. Your final score was 1,001 out of 999 points. Your mom would be so proud. I think that's it. Uh, well, thank you for watching, everyone. This has been the CD-ROM version of Freddy Farkas. I gotta say, I think I'm glad that I did the voices myself, because um, I almost feel like I wasn't even playing the game. I almost feel like I was just watching the game play itself. I mean, at that at that stage, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just, just sitting here watching, and, and I, I almost fell asleep. Uh, towards the end there, I, I was almost falling asleep while waiting for those credits to finish, finish uh, unfolding, so... I, uh, I I am glad that I did the voices myself and didn't rely on the voice acting in this version of the game. But that having been, having been said, of course there is some good voice talent here. There are some good um, there is some good voice acting in the CD version of the game. So uh, hope that you folks enjoyed. Hope that uh, everyone has uh, has been satisfied following along with me as we play Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist. And next time, hopefully uh, hopefully there will be one more video of me playing through the demo of this game, as I said before, and then that'll be it. We'll be done. So thank you, everyone. Take care of all of you folks, and I will talk to you a little bit later. Bye-bye for now.